Alrighty, so today is a new day. You'll see the garage is a little bit of a mess right now, uh, but we're ready to move forward and start dimpling the skins. Previously, I'd already put everything together, really just to make sure everything fit together correctly. Um, this whole kit here is all uh, final sized already from Van, so I didn't have any of the any of the parts with the orange marks or any of the uh, the markings indicating that it's not final sized. But I still wanted to fully put it together make sure everything fit together properly and then take it all apart and get everything uh, ready to move forward. So yeah, today we'll knock out uh, dimpling on the skins. You'll see here I have a stack of parts that are some prime, some not. What I did, which I'll get to later on, um, but I made sure that any mating surfaces were primed and then anything that's gonna be uh, towards the, the inner edge or outer edge, um, anywhere moisture may, uh, may collect, I primed as well. Um, so you'll see here this part, this uh, spar here, this middle spar is gonna be fully primed there. Um, but yeah, we'll get to it, get to dimpling, and start building an airplane part. Alrighty, so we're finally ready for riveting. You'll see here that I went ahead and primered just the mating surface portions of where uh, any ribs are going to interact with the skin there. Um, so you got both of those done. And we're up to, I believe it's going to be page 8-10, step number one, which is going to involve uh, riveting the stringers and ribs and getting this whole thing started. So with that, let's get to it. Alrighty, so I was able to knock out those first few steps with riveting. Um, so page 8-10, 8-11. So moving on to this next portion here is gonna involve riveting in these nose pieces and then dropping this whole assembly um, on top of that portion there. So I have the skins here in the little cradles ready to go. I have the, um, those nose pieces clicoed in and we're gonna get to riveting. Um, as far as clicoing them goes, one thing I did notice uh, that made it easier if I can get this angle right here. Uh, one thing I noticed that did make it easier is when riveting or when uh, click going in these nose pieces, it's tempting to start from the bottom, um, but this gets really, really tight down here. Um, so instead, what I did was started from the top portion. So I got this one click code in, went around to the other side, click code that one, and kind of walked it down um, alternating sides just to make sure I don't get any kind of a unwanted twist of any sorts, which I don't know if that would happen with this piece here. Uh, but anyways, Clico, 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 all the way down, and then remove the ones that I'm gonna start with riveting. Um, that definitely made it easier. The last time that we assembled this, just to make sure everything was matched up, uh, we did fight it at first, trying to get these, these bottom ones done first. And it's a real struggle. It's better just to walk it in from the top towards the bottom. So yeah, I'll uh, put this camera to the side and we'll get to riveting here. near the front portion of it. Ooh, I got a little battery warning, I better hurry. The front portion of the skin pushes away really hard. So what was happening was like make believe this is the rivet here, this is the material. The material is pushing away from the surface to where as soon as I started bucking on the back side of this, the material had no, had no reason to hold itself flat against the surface. Alrighty, so sure enough, the camera battery died. I think right as I was getting to uh, the meat of things. So on my cell phone now, um, but what I was saying was the material pushes it, was pushing itself away on these, these front portions here. Um, the, the arc of this, or the arc of the, the front of the, the leading edge here, uh, was sitting further away than the inside structure. 
So what was happening when I was going to rivet that just now was the material, I think I may have gotten to this part, but anyways, the material was pushed away from the surface. So when I make believe this is a rivet here, when the rivet was in there, I had the rivet there, I had the bucking bar on top, and then I was riveting from the bottom portion or from the, the outside of the skin in, that material had no good reason in the world ever to want to lay flat. So what happened was when I bucked the first one, the uh, shop head formed on the outside, there was a gap in the skin, and there was a little bit of play in the middle. Um, so what I did was I took these one of these drywall anchors and uh, cut the length of it to where it was just longer than the rivet itself. This is the actual one that I did it with. Um, but anyways, cut the, this back portion here uh, to the length of the rivet, cut a side slit in the side of it um, as like a relief point. And what I did then was this piece was placed over that rivet there. Anyways, I have to make believe a little bit here. Anyways, as this was down here, then this bucking bar was able to push on the plastic piece first and initially set that rivet. As it set, this plastic piece uh, through that relief point was able to literally just throw itself to the side. So it actually fully fell off, fell to the bottom portion of the rib, and I was left with a beautiful rivet. Not sure if you're gonna be able to see it or not, um, but it's set in there, and it was able to actually keep it squished together long enough for that shop head to form and mushroom squish and do everything that I wanted it to. So yeah, if there's any other, any other builders out there who get to this point, um, the reason I thought of this method is I think I saw someone in the forums online, someone mentioned using uh, some kind of rubber tubing to, to get this done. Uh, it's just good to know that if you have some drywall anchors, um, just cut the back portion, make a relief cut, do it as long as you need it, and throw it away after the fact. So yeah, back to building. Alrighty, so it's a little bit later in the night here. I went ahead and finished up riveting. So. You'll see, I think I previously mentioned that method I had to use with, uh, with bucking. Um, but I had to do it in a couple of places here. You really only had to buck these uh, two middle uh, front nose pieces in each section of the horizontal stabilizer. Uh, but overall, pleased with the results. I did have to drill out a couple of them and redo them. Um, but I think that just comes with the uh, territory. But nothing, uh, nothing too eventful of drilling them out. Luckily, it went through pretty smoothly. And then these end ones, I was able just to squeeze uh, so that was super easy to do and very pretty looking. Um, so next step is going to involve putting this assembly here on the inside of it. So I'm going to go ahead and put you on a tripod and we'll get to doing that. on the other side of the camera. She did not buck for me, but she promised me that she'll be bucking next time. Um, but went ahead and bucked, I think it was about 600 or so rivets. Wasn't the most um, fun thing to watch, so hopefully that time lapse covered most of it there for you. It's pretty uneventful. You'll see along this bottom portion here, um, pretty much these nose ribs, and then along the front spar here, all of that had to be bucked. Um, there were a couple of seconds, I think I may have squeezed these side ones, but then these here bucked all the way up. Um, yeah, super uneventful and pretty straightforward. There's two takeaways from it um, as far as things that I learned that helped along the way. Number one, which I covered in a previous video, is taping it. So make sure it's taped. Uh, but not only that, um, there's a couple of really awkward spots with, um, with this here where it would have to, like, there's one spot here along, along this bar where you can kind of ima imagine that this side's not open here. Um, but it, you're totally blind because you're reaching inside of here um, at an awkward angle and you're totally blind to it. So I ended up actually like building up a little bit of a bumper on top of the, uh, uh, the bucking bar here, which helped to, to distance it just right to get it away from that radius edge. So it helped to kind of square up that rivet real nice. The other thing I did do as well is you'll see 
Um, I did the same kind of pillowing effect on the top portion here. And what that did uh, was again, the same thing, trying to hold it at the right angle. Um, that, that little bit of, of distance there is the distance of, of the, uh, the uh, shop head side of the rivet. If that makes, I'm not sure if this makes sense or not, but it, it basically holds it away from the surface to allow it, because uh, you're totally blind. Your arm is in here, and once you find that rivet and verify you're there, you're totally blind to it the whole time. Um, so that really did help to keep uh, to keep that that face there uh, perpendicular to uh, to the rivet. Hopefully that makes sense. Comment down below if that doesn't make sense. Um, the other thing that I uh, the other thing I did, which is amazing, uh, this was like just solves all of the world problems right here. Is um, with these these rivet heads. There's another company out there that sells um, like rubberized ones where they have rubber on the outside of it. And the idea there is it prevents it from wanting to dance around and move. It gives it a little bit of traction and keeps it planted on the surface. I didn't have that. This one here came with my kit from Cleveland Aircraft Tools. And it never really was too much of an issue, but I was having scuffing issues. So you'll see, if you want to zoom in here, Amanda, um, it's not scratched, it's just scuffed. And scuffs are very normal when it comes to that, uh, when it comes to the ripping gun here, uh, cause metal on metal, it's gonna bounce around a little bit, you're gonna have it. So that was bothering me. So I looked on Vans Air Force and found that most people were um, actually putting tape on it, so just painter's tape. So what that did was number one, it prevented the uh, scuffing marks. Number two, it actually helps to grip it. So it works the same way, I feel like where that rubberized boot would help to keep it planted there. Because uh, without this, it was really wanting to dance. So it really helps when you're in these awkward situations of, like, say, um, these here. Um, so this section, there's a, um, a stringer that goes along the side of it that reinforces it. So you actually have to come up underneath it. So the, the angle there, angle there is faced like this. So I'm having to reach up and over and pull it back in up against it. So when I do that, like I'm, you're, once you find it, you find it, you don't want to move, and then you get the gun here, or you end up in an awkward situation where you're coming in front of your chest and it's wanting to run all over. So, summed up, the tape helps a lot. Tape there, tape on the front of this, tape on this here. Um, the other thing as well is I know, and when it comes to these bucking bars, they're not cheap, it's tungsten, it's, it's a huge expensive piece of metal. I think it's a hundred bucks just for this little piece of metal here. And I know there's a, um, when you buy the kit, you can get, um, like a more generic steel version of this, like it's a cast iron or whatever, so it's not nearly as, as dense of a material. This was like super beneficial here. I don't think you'd be able to do it with one of those steel bucking bars, where when it comes to this portion here, where it comes in at an angle, it matched, that angle matches perfectly. And I think these are pretty generic tungsten bucking bars. Every one that I've seen, I think I got this on eBay, I think, or Amazon, somewhere. They all have the same angle. Make sure you get one with that angle. If it didn't have an angle and if it was a perfectly rectangular piece, you wouldn't have been able to get to um, to get to the bottom rivet here where it meets this angle. So it, it would have been a it would have been yeah there would have been an issue. It wouldn't have been possible. I'm sure there would have been other ways to do it, uh, but the tungsten bunky bar was was crucial here. Um, other than that, nothing else really. I didn't get any close up shots. Uh, it would have been basically a bunch of loud noises times 600 times in a row. Uh, but next step is going to involve putting on this spar here, this rearward spar. Um, basically, it's going to go up top here, and it's going to be very straightforward. This is going to be one of the easiest parts in the process. Uh, we'll be getting it put on. Uh, reason being, we're going to use just some bit regular pop rivets in these center sections, and then we will squeeze on the rivets along the outside. Um, so yeah, it'll be pretty straightforward. I'll probably just do a time lapse and then we'll uh, recap at the end and we'll catch you then. So enjoy that time lapse. Here is the finalized part. Really pretty, really happy with the results here. Um, again, this is the horizontal stabilizer. 
Uh, we finished this up yesterday, uh, which hopefully we had a good time lapse for you there. Uh, my wife Amanda was able to do the pop rivets there, there, all the uh, basically internal internal ribs, and then I was able to uh, squeeze the rest of the rivets. And then had to buck a couple of them as well. I'll get to that right now here. Um, but there was a step in the process um, on this. Let's see here. Just gonna find the ones that I had to buck. Okay, yeah, on this uh, this front spar here, there were these rivets here, and these here as well that attached to the uh, to the nose ribs. Those weren't accessible in the stands that I made. Um, so in the instructions, I actually said just to wait until the end after it's fully completed to get those done if there wasn't room. So sure enough, had to buck those, um, and it went together pretty well. They were pretty hard to buck. They were the, the bigger uh, eighth inch rivets, uh, which were always a joy, uh, but happy with the results and uh, how they turned out. So yeah, finalized product here. Um, the other key takeaway I had that I wanted to mention real quick before the end of the video is regarding the pneumatic squeezer. So when I bought my kit from Cleveland Aircraft Tools, it came with only one of these larger dies. So these are, if you're not aware, um, these dies here uh, came with one of the large ones and then one of the small ones. Let me grab that real quick, just to make this make a little bit more sense for you. Well, here you'll see what it came with. So it came with one of these taller ones uh, which is small and then one of these uh, shorter ones which is also small so the issue you would have if you only keep the original kit is you'd have one large one and one small one the reason this becomes an issue is in sections let me put this back on here i can do this all on camera i also tape this just to prevent scratching um which you'll see right now but yeah so where, where it became in it or where the tape helps knock that one out real quick is dragging this along the front portion here. It can scratch, it leaves little scratches. Um, I don't know if I can find it right now, but yeah, trust me, it leaves little scratches. Um, so anyways, tape the front of it up just to prevent scratches. But the reason why it's important to have two of those same size dies is in these hard to reach sections. So like this one here where you're deep in the corner, if you were to have the small one, either on the top or the bottom, it's not gonna reach. So if you left the, the big one for the top, it would reach the top of the back of that rivet, but on the bottom portion, you'd be slicing the side of it and just chunking it. Um, so I would recommend if you are gonna buy a kit and, uh, and get a squeezer and whatnot, to go ahead and buy an extra large die. So you have two that line up for those hard to reach sections. I haven't found this being too useful. Um, just having the, the big one, there's, I haven't found a situation where it'd be beneficial to have one small, one big, since in the end you want it to be perfect and not have any chunks off the side. So anyways, I'll quit rambling. That's the end of this part here. And then quick recap, it is this part here. Um, so horizontal stabilizer, next parts are gonna be the elevators. So we have a, a left and a right elevator, uh, which should be pretty fun. It looks like a pretty hands-on hands -on part of the build. Um, but that'd be pretty fun to, to get through. Um, so if you made it this far, really appreciate it. If you like, comment, subscribe, all those things. I know these videos aren't being produced as frequently as I wanted them to. I'm just trying to have as much good content before I post anything. So if you do want to stay up to date, go ahead and follow my Instagram account. It's not like a builder specific account. It's going to be my main personal account. Uh, but I do try to add to my stories anytime I'm working on the plane or doing anything out here. Um, you will see other stuff on it, of course, because it's my personal account. So you'll see some real estate stuff, some mountain biking stuff. Uh, but I really do try to stay, um, at least keep people up to date on what's going on and little little fun videos that I can capture throughout the day. So yeah, again, made it this far. Like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. I'll leave a link in the description and put it somewhere on the screen here. Uh, but yeah, thank you for making it this far. We'll see you in the next one.